After you have finished adding shapes to your project, you will likely want to do some editing. In this lecture, I will be covering selecting the shapes, moving them about, resizing them and rotating them. So the basic core functions of editing. Let's start with selecting shapes. The simplest way is to move your cursor over them. You will see the cursor change and then left click. You can see the bounding box has now been placed around that shape ready to receive your next instruction. An alternative th to this is to drag a selection box over the shape. So what you would do is left click, hold that down and then drag your cursor over the shape that you want to select. This works on a partial selection mode. So basically if you hit a shape with the selection box it will automatically become selected. You don't have to drag the box over the whole shape. Selecting mul multiple shapes is therefore quite easy as you just have to drag this box so that it hits all of those shapes. If you want to add a shape to an existing selection but you don't want to have the other shapes in between selected, move your cursor over the next shape you want selected, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then left click. That will then select this additional shape and miss any others in between. If you want to select all of the shapes on your mat, a keyboard shortcut for this is to press Ctrl and A. This will then select everything on the mat. A shortcut to deselect everything is Ctrl Shift A. With the installed version of Canvas Workspace, there is an additional way that we can select objects and that's via the Layers tab. In the Layers tab, look for the layer or the shape that you want to select and then click on it. If you want to add multiple shapes to your selection, hold down the Shift key and move to the shape that's furthest away and click. That will select every shape in between if you want to select intermittent shapes, hold down the control key and click. And that will select only the shapes that you click on. Let's now look at moving and positioning shapes. The first and easiest method is to click on the shape that you've got selected and drag it around the screen. You can then position it where you want it to be. The next is in the Edit tab on the right. We can change the X and Y position. So if I type 0 and 0, this equates to being top left of the cutting mat. The position always works from the top left corner of the bounding box for that shape that you have selected. You can use the arrow keys up and down to position in increments or you can click into the text editing box and then type in the exact measurement of where you want to position your shape. One additional option when it comes to positioning is in the artboard tab and here is snap to grid. If you click on this, when you drag, it will now position or snap your shape to the grid that's on screen. And you can change the size of that grid in this box here. So if I wanted it to be a very small amount, I would change it down to maybe five millimeters and then it would snap to those five millimeter increments. Just so you know, I am working in millimetres, however, if you wish to work in imperial measurements, go to the display menu, go down to unit and select inches. As you can see, now all of the dimensions that we enter will be in inches. Now that we have looked at selecting shapes and moving and positioning them, let's look at resizing them. 
The first option we have is to use the handles on the bounding box. That's these little dots around the border. If you choose any of the corners, the proportions or the aspect ratio will remain locked together. So it will resize the height and width together. If we use any of the north, south, east, west points, it will stretch according to the handle that you have selected. Another option for resizing is to use the edit box in the edit tab and change the width and height here by typing the measurements or using the up and down arrows by each box. By default, the aspect ratio is locked, so it will change the height according to the dimensions you type in the width or vice versa. If you wish to stretch an object, you can turn that off by clicking in the box and then typing in the additional measurement that you want to use. If ever you want to undo anything, there is an undo button top left of the main toolbar. When using the online version, we saw that we could resize a shape by a particular percentage. We can do that with the installed version as well. You would select the shape that you want to resize, go over to the edit tab on the right, and then click on the resize by scale button. You can then type in the percentage, and as with the other measurements, the aspect ratio by default is locked, but again, you can turn it off by clicking on this selection box here. Now let's take a look at rotating shapes. When you have an object selected, this little handle at the top is your rotation handle. And you can see when you move your cursor over it, it changes to a circular arrow. Click and drag to rotate to any angle. If you wish to be more specific, you can hold down the shift key, click and drag, and that will constrain it to 45 degree angles. And alternatively, we can also go up to the edit tab on the right go down to transform and type in a specific angle. You can type in minus figures to rotate anti-clockwise. Okay, that's selecting shapes, moving and positioning shapes, resizing shapes and rotating shapes. Those are your key editing functions in the next lectures, we will look at things like lining shapes, flipping them, using the process overlap functions, and various other interesting and exciting things.